when we are developing for a web, sometimes we are creating forms and in these forms, users has to select one or more options, as we have in this example, in which we can select one option and another option. And after this form is confirmed, we have to handle all these options for performing the proper processing. Of course, it's possible to create individual fields for each of these checkbox components. However, um, handle that as separated inputs sometimes could not be the easiest or the best choice for developing. There are several kind of inputs we can use for this, for this goal. For instance, we could use a, a select component with multiple selectors or another strategies. We could use checkbox for individual choices, creating three separated fields. But it is, in this example, we are going to see how to create a single field that allow us to select more than one options and they are all in the same field. When we are going to submit this form, for instance, the HTTP package that we read our backend will be all selected options together based under the same name. Let's see how it's programmed here in the behind this screen. Okay, basically we have here the form we are using. We have several checkbox fields. One checkbox input for each of the options. Here one option, here another option, and the third option here, and later the button that will handle our action. What's important for them to be treated as one single field? The name. The name for all of these inputs has to be exactly the same. And why? Because then, when we click in this action, this JavaScript function, we are going to jump to this upper part where the function is defined. And here, when we access the field, we know that this field is actually composed by three options. And as this kind of component are non-exclusive, it means we can select one of them, two of them, none of them, or all of them, and it will receive all the options we are going to see that in the console when we are going to run this code. And then we can look through all the options and verify each of the options are selected. If they are selected, it will return true, and we can ensure this value is selected. If it's false, we have sure it's not selected. So let's see how we can, can track this code execute, execution. It's important to know that the length attribute is the length of the options we have here, three options, because this field will return one array of all the options we have. Let's take a look here in the code. Let's make clear, clear here in the console and let's track that together. When we click in this button, look, it prints the type of this element. It's a radio node list. Just for, for matter of curiosity, it's the same type of radio buttons. This component's behavior is exactly the same. The difference is that radio button, when we select one option, we unselect automatically another option. But in this case, more than one option could be selected together. And, but when we are programming, the logic is exactly the same. The difference is that more than one option could be selected together. So here, all the options are here, the three options, then that's so it has three entries. And each of the entries has a several of attributes. We are not going to see one by one, but the most important one is this checked attribute. The checked, that means it, 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 it was selected or not, could be true or false. And also the value attribute. The value attribute identifies the, um, the value is here inside. In this case, I think I have jumped the option. It's here with V. What is that? Okay, it's not showing because there's more options. We have to click on this three dots here, the value. Okay, here we have this value and for each of these options we have the value and if it was selected or not. Okay, so it's the, the attributes for each of these objects individually. And then 
uh, its own type of its own object variable and then we are going to loop through the options one by one through the maximum of its size and verify if it's selected or not if selected we print the option select the option class and the option name so let's see how it should behave here it prints cheese and tomato and if we select just cheese and clear that just cheese it is printed if you clear that again and select bacon here we have the selected options so here it is how we can use the checkbox input type for tracking the user selected options when more than one option are selected it's important when we want that all options are open and visible to user when we use a select component or other any other kind of picker sometimes the options are hidden so this kind of strategy is nice when we want our options to open in the form and user can see that in an easier way thank you for watching you can find this example code below in the code description